this is mine, and this is mine, and that's mine, and this is mine. Oh, what's this? Oh look a Drake Fang talisman, no one will mind if I take this. Hey, what up YouTube fam and my boys from Dazed? Have y'all ever been in one of those situations where you have two groups of friends that have never met each other before, and you have to introduce them and it's just weird and you don't know how to do it? Well, uh, I made this video for my guildies and Dazed uh, to post on the Discord, but I need a file sharing website to post it on, and seeing as I have a YouTube channel, I'm not going to go create another one. So here we are, Dazed meet the fam, and the fam meet Dazed. Okay, bye! Hey, what's up boys, Moon here. So I wanted to throw together a video for you guys going over the gear that is uh, supposedly going to be getting funneled to me in phases 1 through 4. Now we just switched over to an EPGP loot system, uh, but as far as I know we are still going to be doing essentially loot council for main tank gear. So the stuff that I need is going to come to me because obviously having your main tank geared is uh, very important. Uh, these are not my words, these are the words of others, but I don't disagree with them based on my knowledge of the Classic WoW meta. Now, before we get into the gear discussion part of this video, uh, I want to take a few minutes to discuss with you guys why this gear is getting funneled to me first, as opposed to going to the DPS warriors, rogues, hunters, etc. Um, because I know some people in classic just don't understand anything about tanking i didn't going into classic but i have since put in uh maybe 15 20 hours of you know direct research and obviously the experience that i've gained in game but if you already understand why a main tank needs some threat gear uh, i will have a timestamp right down below this video that you can just skip ahead of this part and just get right into the gear discussion so to put it plainly uh threat is equally as important for a main tank as mitigation losing threat is almost as bad as if you had died. If the main tank loses threat on the boss, the odds of wiping go up dramatically. Now this isn't that much of a problem in the early raid tiers in Molten Core and whatnot because warrior tanking abilities have built-in threat modifiers, but those only go so far, and I'll get more into that in a second. But the thing is, as you're moving forward through the game, DPS are dealing more damage as they get better gear, and thus generating more threat. Each point of damage a DPS deals generates one threat. Now as I get better mitigation gear, I'm actually taking less damage. I'm dodging and parrying more attacks and whatnot, and thus I'm generating less rage, and thus able to generate less threat through abilities. Now I'll throw up an image on the screen, and this is basically the threat modifiers from the warrior's abilities. So revenge, as you can see, it generates 315 threat flat, plus the damage from the ability. So if it does 100 damage, it generates 415 threat. Sunder generates 261 threat, flat. Shield slam, 250 threat, plus damage. You know, a 300 damage shield slam is gonna generate about 550 threat. So I think you get the basic idea. And the thing about this is that these numbers do not modify at any point during the game. A revenge deals the same amount of threat, or I should say, a sunder deals the same amount of threat at, you know, as soon as you hit level 60 as it does when you're downing Kel'Thuzad in uh, Naxxramas. So when you see a tank with a Drake Fang Talisman, and you're like, why the hell does that tank want the 56 attack power off of a DFT? What an absolute waste. It's not. Literally the only way for tanks to generate more threat beyond their modified abilities is to deal more damage. And if you want any further proof of this, you are more than welcome to look into some resources that I'll link below. Uh, Skarm Tank is a great resource for this stuff. He's uh, been tanking on private servers for basically ever. He's got like close to the world record on like Nax clears and stuff like that. Very informed guy. Def Camp and Meldron, also very informed guys. They know their numbers. They have the experience. Uh, this is where I get my information from along with, you know, Reddit threads and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, if you've been raiding with me uh, for the past couple months, you'll know that I'm using, you know, Mongoose Elixirs and, you know, uh, Winterfall Firewater and full consumables every raid for threat. And I don't enjoy pissing away gold. I'm not, you know, I'm not doing that for show. I'm doing that because threat is an extremely important mechanic for tanking. And a main tank has to do everything that he can to generate enough threat for the encounter to go successfully. 
And the last thing I want to say before we get into the actual uh, gear is uh, I will be respecting to Fury Prot in Phase 3 once I get uh, enough of the appropriate gear to respect Fury Prot. And Fury Prot is a, a mid to late game classic WoW build theory crafted to counteract the, the, the rise in DPS threat and the drop in tank threat because of mitigation gear. So what you're doing is you're respecting to Fury, which is obviously a DPS spec, and splashing some points into protection. You're lowering your overall mitigation, but you're increasing your overall threat generation dramatically. And builds like this don't exist for no reason. They exist because they are necessary. So I will be doing this once it is necessary for our guild and once I have the gear. All right, boys, let's finally get into the actual gear discussion. Uh, so this is the build that I have worked painstakingly to theorycraft. Uh, many spreadsheets looking at literally all the gear in the game up through phase four to try and make the best build for our raid team as I understand it, going into AQ40, as AQ40 is going to be the first really big challenge that we face as a guild. BWL, not that hard, kind of like Molten Core. Um, so for Helmet, Helm of Wrath, I want the five piece from the Wrath set for my main uh, tanking set. Uh, the five piece, 20% chance after using an offensive ability requiring rage, that's your next offensive uh, ability requires five less rage to use. So it just allows you to use your abilities more, thus generating more threat. Um, I do want the full eight piece wrath because it's really good for mitigation. Um, and I'll use that on fights where threat isn't a factor. But for the, the main, this main build that I came up with, I want the five piece specifically and it needs to be these specific pieces to make it work. Um, and I did make some concessions for this build bearing you guys in mind. Like I have, you know, five pieces of wrath in here. You know, that, that's a lot of mitigation gear. In theory, I could have, you know, just slapped all the fucking DPS gear in here and just been like, what, I need it. But I think with our guild, with our level of hardcoreness of our DPS and our healers, I think this is the best hybrid build of threat and mitigation gear. So just saying that. Um, Anexia Tooth Pendant for neck. Uh, again, I already have this, so it's no problem, but agility, stamina, hit, crit, it's fucking perfect. It's all you need. I'll be using it all the way through Nax. Uh, agility, for the record, better for prop warriors because it gives you dodge and crit, which is superior to strength, uh, which gives you attack power and uh, block value. Uh, so agility, you're going to be seeing as a theme here, is I'm seeking out agility on purpose on gear, which may sound weird, but I'm doing it on purpose. Uh, for shoulders, these drop off, I think, the third boss in BWL. Strength, edgy stamina, this is perfect fury prot stats, 1% uh, dodge, beautiful piece. Definitely want these. Um, not super coveted. Uh, these do, in theory, get replaced by the tier 2.5 shoulders because they have hit on them. But with the build that I've set up right here, I shouldn't need any more hit going into AQ40. So the all the tier 2.5 should be going to our DPS warriors before me. Uh, I'll get the shoulders somewhere in there based on need for hit rating. But just to let you know, that's just another concession we're making. Tier 2.5, Onslaught Belt, uh, and some other stuff like the Molten Core guns and bows and whatnot. Uh, but for the Cloak, Cloak of the Shrouding Mist, this drops off Rag, 22 Agility, 12 Stam. Personally, I think Shifting Cloak is very comparable to this. It gives you a lot more dodge, whereas this gives you a little bit more crit and stamina. Um, but all the best in slot lists that I could find said you, this is what your main tank should get, not Shifting Cloak, so I'm going to trust the people that know a lot more about this game than I do. Moving on to Chest Piece, we have the Breastplate of Wrath. Again, just a mitigation piece. We shouldn't have any drama over that. Same thing with the Brazers. Mitigation piece, tank gear. Shouldn't have any drama over that. Uh, I had to build this whole build, uh, all the different builds that I theory crafted around Edgemaster's handguards because I need the weapon skill. If you don't know... Weapon skill is the single most important stat, up to eight points that you can get as a melee DPS or tank because it reduces the penalty from glancing blows. In addition, this also reduces the uh, the hit that I need to get uh, where you need 8% hit, right, as a melee. So this reduces it by 1.4 because each point of weapon skill reduces it by 0.2, seven points in weapon skill. So I'm only seeking 7% hit, um, if that makes sense. Uh, moving on to the belt, we have the Waistband of Wrath, 
like Plates of Wrath, uh, again, just mitigation pieces. We shouldn't have any drama over this. Uh, now getting into the fun stuff, that is almost certainly going to induce drama. Chromatic Boots. Uh, these things are damn, damn sexy. Uh, strength, edgy, stam, and 1% hit. Um, what can I say? They, they work perfectly with the build. They give me exactly the stats that I need. They're crazy good. I want them. I... I, I want to, <laughs> you know, like they they fit the build. I'm I'm sorry, I don't know what else to say. Um, hypothetically, if you know this particular build, uh, it's just too much, and you guys are just like, no, you're taking too much good stuff. You can't have all the stuff first. I could drop chromatic boots, take the bow out of molten core to pick up my one percent hit rating there, and potentially move some stuff around. But I would really like to see this come together the way that it is. Uh, next, we have band of curia. Um, this drops off rag, really nice ring, 2% hit. Again, I need the hit. I gotta have the hit. Uh, Agi Stam, fucking beautiful. I'll be using this all the way through Nax. Don Julio's band. Uh, I get this from AV, so obviously no drama there. It's just a really nice ring for threat. Uh, Drake Fang Talisman. This is the other big thing on the list, along with the chromatic boots that's gonna be... Ugh, like, <laughs> people are not gonna want to see me take this, but uh, you gotta understand, 2% hit is fucking huge. Uh, 56 attack power, great for threat, and 1% dodge, you know, it's like I at least I actually get to utilize the dodge on it. Not that that's a reason why, you know, tanks should get TFT over DPS, but, you know, this does a ton for me, and I'll be using it for the rest of the game all the way through Nax, all the way to KT. And uh, if, you know, if I had to pick between DFT and Chromatic Boots, I would go with the DFT just because I need the hit rating, and yeah. Uh, Life Giving Gem. This is generally considered a uh, warrior PvP trinket. Uh, heals you for 15% of your maximum health and increases your maximum health by 15%. So it's basically just last stand but double because all last stand does is increase your health. Uh, it doesn't actually heal you. Um, so this is just great. It's just a great oh shit button to have on my bar next to last stand and shield wall and my potions. And uh, yeah, uh, I think it'd be really good. Um, and all the research I did said this is great for main tanks. It's just nice to have another oh shit button. Because when you die, it really sucks for everybody. Uh, for ranged weapons, um, assuming I don't need to take the bow for Molten Core, I would like to have the Dragon's Breath Hand Cannon. Uh, Agi Stam, perfect for tanking, and that way I don't have to take the DPS ranged from you guys. Um, Elementium Reinforced Bulwark. Uh, this is the shield that drops out of B <coughs> BWL. Uh, it's really nice stats. This thing has a really drow drop chance, so odds are we probably won't see it, but if we do see one or two, I would like to get the first one, as I will still be using a shield, even after I go Fury Prot for mitigation fights, or, yeah, for mitigation fights, and uh, for certain bosses that just hit really ridiculously hard, and I just can't do a wield on those bosses, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And then, of course, we'll come to weapons. Uh, obviously, hopefully, the other binding will drop, and I can just get Thunder Fury, uh, pretty early on in BWL in phase three. But assuming that doesn't happen, I'm going to stick with my Quell Serar as long as I can because I want you guys to get the weapons. Um, but, it, you know, if we reach a point where I'm, I haven't got my binding and, you know, threat is becoming an issue, you know, where, where people are pulling threat during boss fights, then I will have to up my grade, upgrade my weapon at some point. And there are tons of options between Molten Core and BWL. Uh, personally, I kind of like the dagger that drops early on in BWL. It's fast. It has good agility and stamina. Um, I can't remember what it's called right now. I probably should have pulled it up. But yeah, uh, so we're just not going to worry about weapons for right now. I think it'll be fine the way that it is, and we'll address that when the time comes. Hopefully, we won't have to, and I'll just get Thunder Fury. So I think that covers everything. I hope you guys understand why I built the build this way, because I need hit, because I need damage, because I need mitigation, because I need crit to go Fury Prot for Flurry. Um, I really, really did put a lot of time and work into this, so I hope you guys appreciate that, and there's no drama, and we can all just uh, uh, let this build come together. And uh, uh, But of course, if you do have any questions, comments, concerns, please let me know. Uh, you can talk to me directly in Discord, you can whisper me in-game, you can leave comments down below this video and uh, we'll get it all sorted out. All right, thanks guys. Peace, days for life.